Now I'm gonna explain to you four types of customers and how to sell to them in this video. In this video, we're gonna go a little bit deeper with the understanding and the psychology of sales. So I'm very interested to know if you like this type of content. I've kind of kept it real basic with regards to the info and the content that I'm, I'm obviously putting on this channel to, so that I can relate to most of the audience. But I've noticed that I'm getting more and more inquiries to better explain and describe the actual psychology of it all, the science of selling. Because what I found uh, through the comments and through the reviews is that, you know, typically that side of the audience will take those pieces, those gold nuggets, and actually implement them in the field and they have fun with it. And, you know, I thought to myself, I was like, man, that's, that, that's pretty cool, right? Like if you can learn something and be excited to go and try it, wouldn't that take your, your mindset to a different level? Wouldn't it take your focus from looking at it as a grind to looking at it as a game? And for those of you who followed the channel thus far, I, I think you kind of get the idea. My whole intent is to show you that this is a game. This is not a grind. This is not, you know, a hustle, right? This isn't something that should leave you burnt at the end of the day. If anything, you should be, you should feel rejuvenated at the end of the day. You should feel almost empowered because you have this freedom and this uncanny advantage to achieve what you can achieve compared to the standard W-2 employee or just the operational employee. And so my <clears throat> my goal and in the, in the intent in this video, I apologize, it's still dark. I'm, I'm you know, I've just got done with my, my morning ritual and I'm gonna um, be heading home now to get ready. But you know, you're gonna be in the dark, but I, I don't think you necessarily need to watch this video. If anything, you should really just listen to the content. Because again, I'm gonna cover four different type of customers and we come across them all the time. Every single day, those that we engage with fall within uh, one or two of these four. Actually, most, most of the time it's two of the four. And so if you understood what, how to place them, I think you would have probably more fun being creative with how to converse with them. So you're gonna to wanna to stick around, you're gonna to wanna to take notes on this video. And again, leave your comments below. Let me know what your thoughts are on this type of content, the psychology of sales and the kind of just the, the uh, just the overall detail, like going into a deeper level. This is something far different than, you know, your, your wording, your scripting, your, uh, uh, it's a different form of persuasion. So I hope you really enjoy it and I'm looking forward to reading your notes. What's up everybody, welcome back to Sales Remastered. My name is Daniel and I'm your host and in this episode I'm gonna tell you four, I'm gonna talk about four different type of customers and how to sell them. So let's start off with customer number one. Customer number one is the logical type of consumer. The logical type of consumer typically falls within the same type of categories. Usually they, they're more numbers driven, logical minded individuals typically work uh, in operational roles there it's not necessarily any type of an emotional role like like if you think about like uh, law enforcement or caretaking that's more of a uh, an emotional type type um, uh, career or job because you have to have a lot of strong emotion in order to, to kind of push you to do those type of things right whereas whereas numbers driven engineer driven accounting CPAs accountants um, judges, right? Like the, these, these are more more logical type of, of individuals. And what I found is that the difference between logical consumers, which is the which is one type, versus another type, which are emotional consumers, is that with logical minded individuals, you're typically going to get caught up in a sales pitch or engaging with them if you don't have just clear black and white facts and, and, a, and, and a creative way to explain how it all comes together. And so typically you're getting objections from these logical minded people of like, yeah, you know what, before I go any further, just tell me what your rate is. Just tell, just tell me what, you know, just tell me what your fees are. I don't want to give you any, con any information. Basically they want uh, uh, an accurate LE <laughs> Um, just by giving you their, you know, their nickname, right? Like they don't even want to give you their first name, their last name, their date of birth, social, or their address. They just want, they, they, they believe because they don't understand. And this is where empathy comes in. You have to understand that they don't understand. Is that, is that they? It, it's as easy as just calling and asking, and that's how logical they are. They, they, they think that it just kind of, it's a cookie cutter shape. And so if they could tell you, like, I got perfect credit, I got perfect income, never missed a payment, I could pay my bills. 
right? And typically these logical people are the ones that have the worst FICO sometimes, or they, they have they have the highest DTI sometimes is because they don't understand that portion. But if they understood that portion, then they would, they would actually comply with you. So my takeaway is that when you're dealing with someone who's logical, the key thing is there's two, there's two uh, certain words that you could use when communicating with them when you reach resistance with them. And those two words would, is if and will. So let me give you an example. So if you come across resistance with a logical person, I want you to pay attention to typically what that resistance is. And what that resistance has to do with is, is typically they, they want to see the numbers, like they're more visual, or they, they typically want to hold on to it, like, yeah, go ahead and mail it to me, right? And sometimes it's the response that you'll get. But obviously, working in this day and age, we want to operate a little faster than postal mail. And this is why we have the capabilities to send digital disclosures. We have the capability to send email and text. However, when, you're, when you identify that you're talking to someone who of more logical sense, the, the key is, and this is going to apply to both logical and emotional, the key is really to address the objection before it comes it, it always is right because because when you when you meet resistance with anyone whether it's logical or emotional it's you're you're basically defending yourself you're now in the kind of you're being the interrogated and throughout negotiations and throughout a sales transaction the salesman should always be in a position where you're orchestrating the the uh, the flow you're orchestrating kind of the process because if you're if you're in the driver's seat the entire time, you're actually making it happen rather than kind of being part of it happening. And so and so when you position yourself as the one who's kind of controlling the process, you're gonna find that you 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 you're, you're gonna get least resistance. And so I think that's kind of the upside of making this into a game. But when you're dealing with someone logical and you and you've identified that they're logical, what you wanna do is is spark their imagination. Now both logical and emotional people have imagination. Imagination is is what we all have, what we all use. And imagination is your way to communicate with their subconscious. Again, I told you this content is going to be real deep. But this is really the art of persuasion. It's you're actually you're you're actually going above and beyond um, in a technique called NLP, neuro linguistic programming, to where you can you can utilize that that specific person's type of emotion to influence them to do things that they normally would not do if they spoke to someone else unaware of these techniques. And so when you when you identify that we all have imagination, it just depends on how you communicate to that imagination or how you influence that imagination depending on the person type that you're, you're actually dealing with. And so with logical, for example, versus emotional, logical, uh, individuals, numbers driven individuals, those who just want to see black and white, they're not necessarily driven by emotion. You actually have to talk about the future. So, so using those words, ifs and if and will, <clears throat> you want to be able to put it like this, like if you were to pick one of these options now, what will it look like? Right. And so you want to talk about the future. So if you were to save a couple hundred dollars, what will you do with it? So that's some way, that's a way to use the words if and will with someone who's logical. And why that's, that's key is because these logical individuals, they need to see facts. And so when you're communicating with their subconscious and you're communicating with their imagination, you're able to help them use their imagination to create reality. Does that make sense? So they're actually seeing it happen. And <clears throat> no matter what you say, their logical mind is going to say, well, this is a stranger. Um, this person doesn't know me. It doesn't make sense, right? And that, that's typically with the logical individual. And this is why you typically get, uh, okay, let me think about it. And then go ghost is because they, they assess the information. And since again, they don't understand how to assess the information, they'll get swayed or, or kind of, uh, redirected to go somewhere else where they, where they feel that it's reality. So anyway, long story short is that if you use those two words, and you can use them with both logical and, and, and emotional. It's just the difference between is logical. You need them to see in the future. You need to have them see their create their reality where they they experience it for themselves in the future in an optimistic way. Now, with the emotional type of customer, the, the emotional consumer, these individuals are driven by emotion. 
And so, um, you know, emotion individuals are people who do things that require heavy emotion. Salespeople are very emotional people because we're just kind of in this emotional roller coaster, right? And it's natural. The, the most successful of, of the successful salesmen are emotional. So if you're emotional, don't think it's weak. It's okay. It's actually a good thing. Um, it's because you have the ability to understand emotion. You may, have sub, sub, may subconsciously be doing it, but you transfer emotion. And typically those who are kind of dull or logical, and if you're dull or logical, you know, it's no, I'm not discrediting you. If anything, now you understand the difference between and you can actually adopt some of the techniques between. But if you're logical and emotional, you might, you might hear someone who's like that. They're very monotone. They're very straight to the facts. These are the people that, that draw nine page emails in a straight eight page long spreadsheet with numbers and rates and, and, <laughs> and fractions and points. And you know what I mean? Like those are, yeah, it's too logical. You're gonna get your people lost. And typically that's why they, they don't necessarily succeed. Um, but they'll do great in a management role, like an executive role or an accounting role, um, because they understand the, n the numbers and the dynamics of kind of how these numbers work. But in a sales presentation, they wouldn't necessarily win. And so when you're dealing with someone of, uh, in a, with a, a, the emotional type, it's, it, you could still use if and will, but you have to use it where you're kind of using the emotional person's imagination to think about the past. And so kind of oddly, the, the, the best way to do it is, is you wanna think if you didn't buy today, what will happen? Right. So, so in other words, so you're seeing the difference between how you're using if and will to where you're having the logical mind think of the future, right? Like the potential, the possibilities, because you're using their imagination because they're very facts driven. They're very black and white to see the benefit. Whereas the emotional consumer, it's very important that you have them feel emotion. Right. And you're in typically the, the strongest one of the emotions is fear. So you, you're actually selling from a past from, you know, if you're looking in the past, like as if the emotional person's already in the future and you're having them look back in the past. So like if you didn't make these moves or if you didn't create these savings, what will happen to A, B and C? What will happen to your assets? What will happen to your savings? What will happen to your capability to sustain the liabilities that you have right now with your income? Does that make sense? So now you're selling as and the what if you didn't make a move right now, what will happen to you? So that is more more effective with the emotional, emotion-driven consumer because they're they're driven by emotion. So the fear is gonna create the motivation of scarcity or the, the, the scarcity and, and fear emotion will create the motivation to take action. And so they're gonna be a little bit more focused and coherent with your message. Same thing with a logical-minded, if you have them create this imagination or create and write this future of how it will look it's them now now that's black and white to them because they created but subconsciously you're able to do that and and now they're more focused and intrigued with you so they're willing to go forward so keep that in mind now the other two and the reason why i said every consumer that we meet is going to be part of two of these four is because the last two is influencer and decision maker so so Typically when we deal with someone, oftentimes we're actually just dealing with the influencer. We're not necessarily dealing with the decision maker because typically how it works is the influencer is the one who kind of vets things out. They kind of, you know, they orchestrate kind of behind the curtain, right? The decision maker does. And, and, and when it gets down to the pitch table, and, it, and this is why it's important to not just pitch the influencers because if you pitch the influencer, then you're relying on them to actually, um, uh, resell or kind of reiterate all the information and the emotional experience to the decision maker or even vice versa because when you don't pitch them both at the same time you're you're you know you you're you appear to be speaking to the decision maker or you actually appear to be speaking with both but tailored towards the decision maker but when you identify who the decision maker versus the influencer is you also sprinkle benefits and, and thought-provoking content or imaginary content to the decision influencer. So if the decision influencer was more emotional, but the decision maker was more logical, now I know how to communicate with them too. I can communicate with the decision influencer in a way where far past our, our, you know, our conversation after we hang up, 
I know that the seeds that I planted with that decision influencer is going to now help influence the decision maker to go with me because I was able to understand how that person thinks. I was able to understand what pushes them. And so now, if I were to, let's say, speak with the decision maker who's completely opposite, like, let's say they're logical, I'm having them do something that's completely different. Again, this is very, very technical stuff. This information and this content, these techniques, allowed me to sell $75,000 driveways and pool decks. You know, when the market crashed, I went into, um, I went into uh, paving stones. I used to sell paving stones and landscape. Um, and I did this for a short while, and, and I was very, very successful at it. The reason why I got out is because I got back into real estate and I didn't understand the details of, of measuring and, and construction and I hated that part, right? Because whenever I would make a sale, the company would then take from my commission if I, if I didn't measure something right or I didn't account for you know, the layers that's required to create the paving stone. And so it was just, it, you know, I hated it because ultimately my, my paychecks or my commission checks would go from like 10 to 15 grand down to like three grand. I'm like, dude, I spent like two hours, you know, working on that, on that particular customer. And I used to have to drive out to far ass places. Like they would pay you and you had to drive super far, right? Like the Palm Springs at the spur of a moment because you got an appointment. So, you know, that was kind of bothersome. But anyhow, these techniques allowed me to to take people that I didn't know, um, you know, just a couple hours ago, and I'm sitting in their house and I'm selling them on a seventy-five thousand dollar ground, <laughs> basically, and it's it's through emotion, it's through these, it's through understanding the actual psychology of sales, and I hope that you understand it too. And if you want to understand a little bit more, this is exactly what my course is all about. It's emotional intelligence. It's understanding the emotional investments of any particular type of customer and salesremaster.com, these courses teach you a more efficient way because it controls, it helps you understand the idea of emotion and controls the emotion. So you're you're actually letting, you're delegating the grind, right? You're, dele you're basically delegating it and making it into a game, you're making it into a sport, but more importantly, you're removing the grind and the hustle from your process and you're creating this efficient system and engine that ultimately turns into a game and so every single sale becomes points. Because you're looking at it a little bit differently, you're actually getting different results. Those results just happen to be the exact results if not 10x times that because you're now getting the results that you, you wanted at a rapid rate. And it's all because you're now playing with a different vibe. You're now playing to the tune of your particular customers. This is why you become in sales is because you're using creativity. The reason why these sales techniques work is because your creativity sparks the imagination of your consumer and your consumer is controlled by their imagination. It's that, that they're influenced much more through their imagination than they are from any stranger, any salesman. And the reason, the primary reason for that is because imagination equals emotion imagination is basically true hard facts that create emotions that push us in any direction throughout the day and and I cannot tell you um, something that's going to influence you sh more effectively than your own brain your own head your own voice and when your own voice is is influencing you to do things it's your imagination bro <laughs> a lot of times not even facts it's your imagination so i hope this content helps and again comment below let me know what you think about this type of content because you know i'd be kind of reserved on on releasing more content like this but this is deep if you really understand this i guarantee that you're going to create some some actual um uh response and, and you're going to get you're going to get different results when you're actually engaging with people and it feels so empowering to know that you can almost be like a puppeteer because you understand like, oh, okay, you're the logical one or, oh, okay, you're emotional or, oh, okay, both of you are emotional. I know exactly how to communicate with you now. You become so confident and it's almost like a sensei, man. Like, you, like you're a sensei sparring with one of your apprentices and you just know three, four, five moves ahead before your apprentice even throws a swing. You already kind of know what they're going to do. And you have just this advantage where that you're just the smartest person in the room. And so I hope that this info helps. I look forward to sharing more content like this. Don't forget to catch me on the live stream Thursday, 8.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. 
catch me on the live stream add me to your stream now if this is if this is youtube click the subscription hit the bell so that you're alerted of any new topics that i come up with if this is facebook make sure you go to the home page make sure that thumbs up is lit so that i'm on your feed and recommend like share this video link because this powerful information will really help somebody if you like helping people you're gonna get help boo boo so i'll see you in the next video